Well, hello there. Pray that you're having a fantastic day today. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here. And I tell you, my friends, I am excited. I am excited about the goodness of the Lord and all of the things that God is doing. On my way into the office today, I called one of our members, just a wonderful lady, uh, Sister Gloria Watford. And Sister Gloria had gone through some surgeries and she'd been uh, sick and under the weather. And when I reached out to her today, I tell you, she sounded like she did 20 years ago. And she said, Pastor, God has given me a miracle. And we just rejoice to hear the strength in her voice, to hear the joy in her uh, from the goodness of the Lord just did something in me that is still resonating on the inside. I'm still, listen, I'm, i I'm still rejoicing off of last Sunday. You, you were fantastic. The man of God, Bishop Leroy J. Woolard on Bishop Leroy Jackson's Woolard Day. I'm still talking about it because you helped make it so special. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. Thank you for the comments that came in. Uh, you guys are something else. And I appreciate that you appreciated that uh, even in days like these and in these last days, it's still right for people to not forget those who have been good to them and who have been there for them in their time of need. The novelty of good things, in my opinion, wears off much too quickly in the times in which we live. We turn the page much too quickly and quickly forget people who have been there uh, 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 in our darkest moment. And you may never get the chance to be th there for them the way they were there for you or they may never get the chance to be there for you the way you were there for them, but something can be done to show honor and appreciation for someone who was there for you in the time of need. And I tell you, Bishop Leroy Jackson has, Willard has been that man and you, you really helped me. Now listen, we're praying for our nation. I'm praying that Russia leaves Ukraine. It's, it's looking a certain kind of way. And I believe that we need to stay in prayer and to seek the Lord that God gives us peace. Now, my friends, this, uh, this has nothing to do with being a Democrat nor a Republican. I, I don't want to uh, get into uh, who's in office or who's not. I don't want to waste time on those things right now, because to be honest with you, uh, we don't need that. We don't need American blood, nor American treasure uh, spent and lost in a, a war. And nor do we want to see the people of Ukraine, nor, nor the Russian soldiers uh, uh, invading. I know that the Bible teaches that there will be wars and rumors of wars, but we have the right to pray for peace and to ask God to give us peace in the land and beyond uh, going uh, beyond the things that are happening almost a world away over in, in Europe and in the Soviet Union. Look at the, the crime and the things that are taking place in the streets of our nations, as, of our nation as never before. We need to pray as never before. The church has to be the church. We've got to stand our ground and declare God's truth. And not only in the streets of our cities and towns and uh, major cities and, and minor cities for that matter, but in our homes. We've got to pray for moms and dads. We've got to pray that the enemy not redefine, not redefine what it means to be a family, what it means to be a mom, what it means to be a dad. Oh, yes, we got to pray. We got to pray that the church stands its ground and that believers conduct themselves as believers. Because, my friends, we are the Lord's representatives in the world. People are looking at us. They're looking at us. Uh, they're watching us to see Christ in us. Believe it or not, there are people who do not attend church, who don't know Jesus, who are not interested in religion at all, and yet they hope that those of us who know Jesus, they hope that we succeed. 
They hope that we uh, turns out to be the people whom we claim to be. Because if we are, then that will give them hope. You see, there have been so many who have let many of the lost down that those who don't know the Lord have just signed off on church. They've, they've just decided, I, I'm through with church, I'm through with religion, I don't want to hear anything about it because the, these people say one thing and they do another. Christian conduct is very important. I believe that we can show the world, and I know that we are called to show the world that there is a reality in serving God, that this thing that Jesus actually changes the heart and changes the mind and he sets you free and that Christ is not a liability, but he's the greatest asset of all, of all and of all time. So my friends, I love you and we are going to stay on the wall telling people about Jesus Christ. And I want you to continue to pray for Brother Wooden that we stand our ground and we declare God's truth. Now, you know, you know, when I talk to you about this, uh, you know where I'm headed. I am. I want to invite you to join me tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. And, you know, look at me. I'm, I'm, I'm rubbing my hands. <laughs> I'm almost licking my chops because I'm ready to teach and preach the word of the Lord. Amen. The word of the Lord. God, the, the, the Lord has spoken to me and, I, and the word is in me. And I'm excited about what God would have me to share with you tonight. Well, before I actually talk about tonight, I want to talk about tomorrow night. Now, tomorrow night, I am going to be with one of the greatest men of God uh, in, in the world. I thank so much of Pastor Patrick Leak, and I am going to be with him for his pastoral anniversary. The name of the church, my friends, is Tree of Life, Church of God in Christ. This man of God is a warrior for Jesus. His wife loves the Lord. I tell you, the enemy tried to afflict them, and they both rose triumphant. They have a wonderful church there, Tree of Life, Church of God in Christ, and the location is uh, uh, in Greensboro, but it's 9B Dundas Street, 9B Dundas Street for his seventh pastoral anniversary. I, I think uh, the world of this man of God and the Lord is going to bless us tomorrow night in Greensboro. So my friends who may be watching this in the Greensboro area, join me. We have proper protocols in place and uh, everybody's going to be safe uh, by the help of the Almighty. And yes, I'm going to be there in person, in person, preaching the word of the Lord with power and authority. And I would love to see you there. But tonight, 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 I want you to join me right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. And whether you can be here live or if you're going to join us uh, through um, virtually, I want you to join me and make sure if you're joining me virtually. Now, you got to have your Bible. You got to have your Bibles, and uh, and if it, if possible, uh, have your Bible and your pencil and your pen out where you can take the notes and all that, because we are going to have Bible study. <laughs> Yes, Bible study. I get excited about it every time I mention it. And you know, I think that there is nothing greater that a minister, a preacher, a pastor, anyone who's called into ministry can do than teach and preach and walk through the pages of the scripture because there is nothing like the word of God. Now you go on and make it a fantastic day. Let me try, try to straighten up here. And uh, get ready uh, for, for the word of the Lord tonight, because we are going to have a wonderful time. May God's choice blessings be yours. And I'll see you tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ.